My name is Sabina Mo. I'm a contemporary dancer and choreographer in Berlin. I also work a lot in the drag scene and the like club entertainment scene. I work with DJs for dance and I work with um, other musicians as well. I've been in Berlin for six years. I came straight from Seattle. I had never been here before, um, but something felt right. It was really bizarre. It was like walking on the streets of Seattle just being like, oof, I need to be away. I need to be in a city where I can work with a bunch of different artists who really want to work with dancers. And that was 100% Berlin. It used to be. It yeah. had it has a history of being really fringe and very DIY and very like, you kind of make your own scene and create within your communities. But then big tech came in and completely washed all of it out. And now it's just a bunch of khakis. I like had a big backpack and a suitcase and my, like, my yoga mat. I was like, okay, let's move. And I didn't have a job. I didn't know how to get a visa. I had no prior experience to any of the paperwork or anything that it meant to live in a foreign country. Yeah. Um, but people helped me out and immediately I found my community and they really supported me. And so then I always do the same thing to anyone who's trying to come to the city for the first time especially when that community helps to fulfill more than just like a friendship and connection, but also artistry and creation and brainstorming and play also. It's really important. I think Tipsy Bear is one of my biggest communities. It's a queer bar in Berlin. It's properly queer. You have everyone there to just center and be themselves and be with their people. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where my drag community comes from. That's where a lot of my work comes from also, I work there at the door, I work there on the stage, I work there just to work. Um, and then <laughs> as well, uh, 90 Mill, which is part of the Palace Collective, it's a DIY space that is really beautiful. You can walk down the halls and get involved in a ton of projects, meet down to earth, focused, interesting, gentle people, It's they're both those are my two hubs. That's kind of where I bounce between. They have everything I've ever needed together. I have a collective called the Cows, C O Ws. Uh, we stand for queer weirdness and gorgeous non binary um, nasty shit. We do festivals. We have our own show at Tipsy Bear. And it's just there to be like high femme, high absurdity, high community. We want to make people be as silly as they can while still feeling like they're participating in a group experience. I think we want to spread community through play through our shows. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the root of queerness is just understanding that there's a vast variety of ways to be. That is what queerness is. The binary and like a straight mentality is one or two things. Queerness is transcends numbers. It's so, so much. And in order to get into this bubble to really understand vastness and variety, it's important to play, to yeah. have fun, to be silly, to break out of how you feel like you're supposed to be as a 30 year old, 40 year old, 25 year old, 16 year old, whatever age you are. And my medium dance and hosting shows allows for silliness to start to creep in. And when you can be silly, it means that you are fully experiencing yourself you're letting go you're you're trying you're laughing and laughing with others another thing about queerness is experiencing something with everyone around you having a, a being held in a room so i think we've had a couple people who just wandered into tipsy bear one day didn't know what it was didn't know what was going on and they were mooing and making eagle noises and screaming and like clapping and doing this. And I was like, this is it. Like yeah. now you're indoctrinated. Now you understand what a queer space is and it's meant to allow you to unleash a little bit, to shake off what we think we know and just move a little bit. It is definitely getting more dangerous for queer folks, especially very visibly queer folk, very visibly queer folks. Um, it's getting really scary. It's not safe. And it, and also being like, reading femme or having breasts is also becoming less and less safe. It's getting really spooky out on the streets. Um, 
a queer space in general is a diamond. It is a rare thing. It's there's a there's an overrepresentation of one kind of way to be queer, which is this cis like gay man. And while that's a also a beautiful way of being, there's too much of it where it starts to feel unsafe for other queer folks. Mm. So a properly queer place where the dolls can come and everyone feels like, oh, I can fully like experience the deepness of myself in this space. is like only one little spot and that's Tipsy Bear. And other things are also rep underrepresented in the world. In every major city, there's not enough lesbian bars. There's not enough bars that are trans friendly or like primarily for trans folks. Mm. It's just jockstrap parties everywhere. <laughs> I think it's interesting, this word cringe, because I think that people experience that emotion internally to themselves when they see something that they've been like cutting away from them in front of them they cringe yeah. because they have that in them yeah but they haven't let that like nestle in them yet so they go Ugh. <laughs> <laughs>